So today's question is, do you rent or do you own? No, not your units. The laundry in your units. I'll give you a tale here of two rental buildings. In one of my buildings, I lease the washer and dryer, and in the other building, I own them. You may have the same arrangement in some of your buildings as well. See, in the building where I own the laundry machines, I don't pay any of the utility bills, not even the water. In fact, I supply the washer and dryer free for use. It helps me attract uh, new tenants when it's vacant and keeps my rents a little bit higher that way. See, tenants appreciate extras and are willing to pay a little bit more for them. In another building, I inherited a coin-operated system, and that was for the laundry. The day I closed escrow, I signed off and acknowledged the building had a leased laundry, and what I failed to do was carefully read that lease, something I really regretted later, not having read all the details. See, a few years later, I looked into replacing the coin-operated leased machines. The amount of money I received from the company started to shrink each and every month. In the beginning, I was getting right about a 50-50 split, and within, I don't know, three years or so, it dropped to just around 20%. Now, couple that with the inevitable higher cost of water, gas, and electricity, I started to realize I was paying my tenants to wash their dirty clothes each month. That came as quite a shock. The leasing company had a clause in their lease that to break the lease, I had to give them notice. That seemed reasonable, right? Well, turns out the notice was not what our state laws allow for our tenants. No, it wasn't a 30 day, it wasn't even a 60 day. It was a 10 year notice. When I found that out, I was incensed. Are you kidding me? Who in the right mind would have agreed to something like that? Obviously, it was a former owner who didn't think it mattered much. Hey, it was my fault for not carefully reading that lease, and I accept that fact lock, stock, and barrel. What I did after discovering this was to call the leaser. They were located in Texas. I explained the issue, and they told me that they were well aware of their leases in California. I asked, is there a way around these leases so that I can put in my own units? The lady actually started to chuckle with me with that question. Um, I didn't think it was funny, but she was chuckling, so that made me even more upset. How could I be such a fool? Well, I was. I started to act out a little bit. I said I was going to report them. I said that I know it can't be legal in California. Um, you should have heard me rallying off names of the governor, senators, House of Representatives, <laughs> the mayor, etc. All it actually do or did was, uh, you know, make her laugh out loud. She was polite, but firmly said, "Sir, go right ahead." <laughs> that their lease had already been tested in California and found to be valid. But if I chose to go that route, it was my choice. I asked her for the name and address of where to send my written notice, which she gave me, and I hung up. I made calls to my attorney and a few friends I felt, you know, might have some insight. She turned out to be correct. There really wasn't anything I could do but wait the 10 years. Moral of the story, be sure to get advice when entering into an existing lease of any kind. It's a major convenience for the tenants to have on-site laundry, though. Um, even if they're coin operated, it beats the heck out of them having to pack everything up in their vehicle, running over to a local laundromat, and still having to pay for it. So I figured this out. I checked last year. I average about $80 a month on that building. Um, 
I doubt it pays for all the gas, electricity, and water use, but here's the bottom line. It makes the tenants happy, so in turn, makes me happy too. Lesson learned.